Action! We're live! Welcome to the Red Beard Show. Another edition, and we're on Vancouver Island. We're here with my good friend Dave Marlin and our other good friend Kevin. And this is Dave Marlin's shop. We're at the Urban Smoke Shop in Courtney, BC. So we're going to start off in the head shop, and we'll give you a little bit of a tour and show you some of the glass that Dave's been busy making and some of our other friends show off some work. Hey, right away, I just noticed... There's some uh, iceberg glass. Last week, Maddie was the uh, star of the show, the artist of the week. And if you can spot that penguin there, we might have to pull that out and get a closer look. Iceberg glass makes all the penguins. Uh, it's his trip. Let's pull one out and give everyone a closer look. So uh, everyone in chat, maybe give me a shout out about the sound. Let me know how it is. We're mobile. Hopefully the internet connection is good. So here's one of Matt from Iceberg's Penguins. Pretty awesome little guy. Some editions have headbands. This guy's got the uh, the thick eyebrows. Pretty awesome. Let's see some of your work, Dave. Sure. How long have you been blowing glass? Let's, let's, let's tell the folks a bit about yourself. Uh, I think I've been on the torch about 10 years now. 10 awesome years. Definitely love what I'm doing. Loving it. You should show the finger too. I love those. So here's a sandblasted piece. Dave does some carving. Let's get that up to the camera. You can see the end of it. Looking good. The fingers are mad. He was making these at the gathering a couple years ago. Look forward to having you back at the gathering this year. Not planning any more babies sometime this year? Nothing's planned. We'll see what happens. <laughs> right on. Okay, well, we pulled out a few nice pieces over here. Got a nice lineup. Got some nice villicello rigs here. Let's see if we can focus on the inside of the uh, can here. So we call that a villicella. So Dave's drawn the outline of a reticello, basically, and then filled it in with. Oh, let's not spill the bowl. And then filled it in. So that's actually the back side on the bottom. And there's the other side in the water. So Dave also does some electroforming. So you can see we've got an electroform piece here. Some nice sandblasting in the middle. That's sharp, bud. Cheers. Amazing. Is that how did you get that design in there? Can you kind of simply explain that? Or? That is actually sandblasted as well. I go a little bit deeper on the glass and then coat the metal over top of the deep etched in sandblasting. Oh, that's great. I never would have guessed. So it's sandblasted underneath the forming. Yep. Cool. Another filicello. Colors on that, man. Holy. Well, I hope we're recording and live. I haven't heard anything from the chat here, so we'll just wait and see. If not, well, we're just talking to ourselves. It's always the fun thing with this. Oh, yeah. It says we're recording, but hey, who knows? Looks like we're recording. We got some updates on the side here. So check out this piece. Got some basket weaving involved. That's a technique I don't often do. Time consuming. A nice bow tie on the bottom. Colorful. Yeah, that's a I lot of fun. It. That piece, I think, was made about a year and a half ago now. Um, got some more fresher pieces here. These are some collabs with a good friend of mine, Chris Bruno. Yeah, he Chris does Bruno. all the skulls. I threw a couple of his skulls onto just some little beakers here. That's awesome. And you tagged the backside. I see. Is that a is that a bake on sticker there? Or that what is. Yeah, that's there? just a bake on decal. Yeah, I like those. The ceramic That's sharp. Yeah. Yeah, I really like the uh, silver logo on the black here. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's sharp, man. Sharp. I noticed you got a crazy big dabber in the cabinet here. <laughs> nice big, what do you call that? A triton that, or something? That's a trident, yeah. A trident. It wasn't actually intended as a dabber, but if you were to get serious about it, I definitely would get the job done. <laughs> that's the first thing I said. But he's got the world record holding dabber on the wall there. That's about a four and a half foot long trident. Anyway, fun stuff, fun stuff. You got a really nice shop here, Dave. Nice selection of nice gear. You got a nice little uh, selection of things that aren't glass. Safety cases. Let's have another little walk around. Got some nice production glass. There's quite a few artists in here. I can see some uh, Gibson glass, some iceberg glass. 
Who else did you mention? Andi? Was that, was that Andy I on in here? Andy I. Yeah, a lot of Iceberg. Who else? We got some PJ Glass. Good friend of mine, PJ. Uh, well, let's see here. We've got some Alex Zirkle, some full circle glass in here. Yeah, look at these. Everything in this case is locally made. Look at that. One with the Kush Cup logo on there. Hey, yeah. <laughs> There's one of those in there. That's awesome. We had a good time at that. That was yeah. that was a couple years ago now, I think, that Dave and I did the Kush Cup. Yeah, not this summer that passed, but the summer before. We got some nice stash boxes here. This looks like a bit of an import corner, maybe. A little soft glass selection. Yeah, a little bit of import corner. Our, not much, though, man. Not, not much, much at all. We try and support the local guys as much as we can here. Yeah. Definitely being a local glass blower myself. Speaking of which, should we go check out the shop? Yeah, let's do it. Just right around the corner here. So I'll do camera forward. You lead the way. Because right. halfway to the shop, we've got his cold working station. And let's take a look at that. This right. isn't something that I do a lot of. I do some sandblasting and etching. For sandblasting, basically, we're just masking off the glass. And then we will sandblast away the pattern that's not masked off. Here we've got a, a wet saw. What do you use this saw for, Dave? Uh, I use this for cutting down large lengths of glass and also for cutting perks, the little slits that you'll see in your downstem. Uh -huh. it, it's all wet tools, so I've got water plumbed in here. Keeps everything flowing smooth, keeps the glass cool while you're cutting it. Awesome. How about the drill press? What do you need that for? Uh, the drill press also has a water chuck that we hook uh, diamond bits into for grinding out glass joints to get a nice, tight, perfect seal in there. Amazing. What's back there? That is my electroforming tank. Nice. So that's where we're sticking the copper to the outside of the... I see some copper down here. Yes, yes. What other uh, metals can you stick to the outside of the glass using that type you of machine? You can plate all sorts of metals with that machine, but you would need a separate tank with different chemicals for every metal that you planned on doing. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, it's a bit of chemistry involved with it, but it's a lot of fun. That's neat. Yeah. I'll have to check that out some more someday. Awesome. So now on this side of the wall, he's got like he's rented almost like a duplex here. And here we've got his hot shop. So here's underneath the great big hood. And the kiln's right next to us and behind us. Yeah, the ventilation's pretty hefty. Wow, up you know what's funny? I didn't notice that earlier. That is a big fan. Yeah, it's a three foot by three foot <laughs> shaft that makes a 25 foot run up to the roof in the top and I'm pulling 8,000 CFM. Wow, and you can't hear a thing, man. No. Amazing. Whisper my fan's so loud and right next to my head. Probably a third of that suck. So yeah, this is a righteous station. Let's take a look at your torch. What kind of torch is this? All right, this is my newest torch. This is a Herbert Arnold 40 mil. Really unique, unique burner. Uh, I'm liking it a lot. Just sort of getting to learn its ins and outs right now. The main difference between this torch and a lot of other torches is it has a compressed air line into it as well. And it mixes compressed air with your fuel to give a really nice, soft, easy working flame. Uh, I'm really enjoying the torch. It's beautiful for color work, really nice for thin sculptural stuff. Uh, great torch. Nice. Yeah, I've heard really good things about this. A lot of guys are even switching from the GTT uh, back over to or, or over to the Herbert Arnolds. They got a nice yep. soft flame, good for thin glass I hear and goblets and, and generally in shaping. Awesome torches for production work and for like ripping through thicker stuff a lot quicker. But for a little bit more finesse, the Herbert Arnold is definitely a good choice. Yeah, totally. Here's the same. So, and this has got a few more regulators than ours. You've got an inline regulator here. That is a pressure reducing regulator. It drops your propane pressure down to 50 millibar. Or Amazing. 0 0.75 psi, where most torches will run on between, I'd say, 4 to 10 psi fuel. Yeah, exactly. Crazy. Let's go look at that torch over there. This is the torch that I've got on order. I'm cr pretty excited. I'm excited just to see this torch. This is the GTT Delta Mag. And it's a step up from what I was using, the Mirage. And actually, the, the Mirage is the, is the torch in the center here. So it's basically three torches in one. We've got the Lynx, the Mirage, and then the Delta Mag around the outside. And you've got this mounted on your lathe, I see here. Let's get a backup view. And check out this lathe. That is a monster, man. She's a good one. Uh, I think the bed length is about seven feet, so I can pull a really good chunk of glass on her. 
That's awesome. So the torch is mounted on the lathe, and you can just spin this dial to move the whole torch platform to the left and right. And he's got a second torch, and the second crank right there. That moves this chuck on in. And I noticed the Bunsen burner on the back side there. He uses that to warm up the glass uh, just next to the torch. Quite the setup with a double foot pedal. Awesome. Now everyone's probably wondering, when are we going to blow glass? Well, I'm not sure that we're going to get a whole lot of glass blowing done today. We're mostly doing a studio tour, and we're introducing Dave's work. now and uh, maybe Dave are you gonna do any work on uh, one of those bubbles in the kiln or anything or did you have any joining to do uh, or? I could stick a few things together on the Herbie yeah uh, I was gonna get started on a fill of it that's a really long process. that's a long process and actually I wanted to show the people out there that what he, that's Filicella prep work I've never pulled stringer that thin in my life look how thin that is amazing Okay, so I realized I don't have the chat logged in correctly, so I'm just going to go over here and log into chat. Uh, Dave's going to maybe think of firing up his torch for a second. I'm going to have a dab while I check out the chat, and we'll see uh, we'll see what y'all are saying. So just got to log in here. I guess I forgot to do that. I could pull a few stringers or something to show people like how I pulled that. That's a great idea, man. Great idea. Let's start with that. All right. Well, I'm finally logged into chat. Wonder how y'all are doing. So, I just set up here, and let's see. I'll just set my camera down. Oh yeah, good idea. Get it up off the ground. This little BHO. So this week is a short show. I've got uh, my one of my best friends, Chef Seamus, and his lovely partner, Cora, have a new baby. So we're due to go to their place for... Uh, oh, I got it. I got my dab all ready to go here. So. Set it right there. Oh, really? It's it's the right length. Well, I don't have it on lock. Oh, Kevin's going to show me how. All right. Oh, I went the wrong way. Hook me up, Cap. So next week, hopefully, we'll have another show. I'll be back on my home turf. It's a bit hectic getting here with the ferries. Always fun traveling to Vancouver Island. I hope you can make it over here sometime. It's beautiful. Got a nice town here in Courtney. And, uh, yeah, just glad to be here. Glad to see Dave's shop. Dave's had this shop for about, is it nine years, Dave? Uh, I've been working here for nine years, yep. Uh, owned it for seven now. Owned it for seven now. And with a recent expansion, it's looking awesome. Hopefully you can... Catch Dave at this year's show. I'll let you turn that off for me, Kev. Yeah. Almost 420. It's almost 420. Look at that. Well, it is a short show if we're almost done. Mmm, some tasty birds here. <coughs> so I had a good chan uh, chance to meet the fella that that bought the free Mark Bong on my way down, and I just wanted to give a shout out to that guy, Dave. Really a pleasure meeting you, Dave. It's really nice to meet a supporter of the cause. He's really excited that the money's going to a good person and a good cause. So a shout out to Dave. <coughs> wow, one thing I noticed is this Bethlehem shirt. Holy smokes. Yeah, they're bright. Ah! I've never seen Stringer pulled like that. There you go. I just learned something new, folks. And look how quickly he can grab it with his bare hands. No tools necessary, eh? Not really. Not He's really. just snapping it off with his hands. That's right. The first tools. Oh, hopefully I got the right camera angle. Sorry, folks. Take a dab and point the camera at the floor. Awesome. You can see Dave's got a screen set up for his live security feed for the shop next door. It's quite the setup you got here, Dave. Cheers, man. Yeah, it's been uh, constantly evolving over the years that I've owned the place. All right, well, let's take a peek in the kiln. See what the man's got working on here. Is that all right if I open this, Dave? Yeah, feel free. So he's got some reverse balls happening. Nice little tube ready. 
And oh, I see a Chris Bruno collab in the back. Another skull. Some work up here. Let's just have a little tour around the shop. Some, there's always interesting things on top of the kiln. Those are always projects half started, half finished, repairs to be done. Here's a tool that I got to get next to the, the press. So it's got a carbon base in there, and you can just jam your hot glass in here, press it down, flattens it into a perfect puck. Some nice filicella work on his bench. Wigwag, bitch windows, we covered that last week. Well, I'm happy to say I finished that bong we did last week, the bitch window bong, and it's found its happy home already. It's off to uh, Collector and Vernon. And uh, he was in the chat for a little bit last week, so a shout out to High Society uh, Shop that'll be opening in, around Vernon. So all this prep work you've got here, is this, you figure, just for one fill up? I could get probably two done with that. Yeah. And how long would it take you, let's say, uh, start to finish for uh, a fill up about this size? Uh... I'd say two hours, two and a half hours. It all really depends on how it goes. Some can go a little bit quicker than others. And I heard you got a class coming up here in March. Want to tell us about that? Yeah. Pretty excited. I hope that I can be here for it. Should be a good one. We've got Marcel Braun coming up to do some uh, Oro Crucible demos at the beginning of March. That should be a lot of fun. So the crucibles, you actually have a molten pot of glass in like a pottery style kiln. And you go in through a little access hole in the top and gather out of a molten pot of glass rather than in the torch. Uh, should be a good time. Hope to learn a lot. Yeah, Marcel is a, a genius on the torch. Definitely a very talented individual. I had the pleasure of meeting him in Toronto at the TY Expo. All right, I see it's 4, 4.20 right now. It's time for me to fill up my volcano bag. And I think that this is going to be one of the fastest shows that we've had. 